Hi, in this, uh, in this video, we're going to do conditional probabilities. Uh, I mentioned this in a previous video that this is kind of beyond the scope of basic probabilities. It gets a little bit more complicated. But again, I don't think it's very hard, especially if you'll use Venn diagrams. So let's look at an example. Same example that we've been doing started off with the same example anyway. We've got these 2,000 farmers uh, all categorized in these different ways. You've seen this in previous videos. And our question, uh, let's say our question here, here is that we've got a surveyed farmer from Alabama is selected. So we've got an Alabama farmer, and now we want to de determine the probability that that farmer grew beans. Okay, so let's start with our Venn diagram and populate the, uh, the, the regions in the Venn diagram. We've done that already. And before I get into the notation and the, and the definitions of, of conditional probabilities, let's just kind of logically think through this because it's, it, it logically it should make sense to you. So it says we've got a, uh, the first sentence there at the bottom says a surveyed farmer from Alabama is selected. So that means now we're not talking about the 2,000 farmers overall. We've got an Alabama farmer. So we have one of these farmers that are in the outcome of event A and says, well, what's the probability this farmer grew beans? So now I'm not talking out of the 2,000 farmers. I'm talking about out of the 351 farmers, what is the probability that, uh, you know, something occurred, in this case, that the, the, the farmer grew beans? And so I, I look at the Venn diagram now, and uh, out of the 351 there, how many grew beans? Well, there was 234, and that 234 could be split up as the 91 and the 143 that I have shown. Those are the ones who grew beans. And so my probability is going to be that 91 plus the 143 or, or 234 divided by 351. That's my answer. So the denominator is going to be just the 351 because that's how many people were from Alabama. That's how many Alabama farmers were in the survey. And then the numerator is the number of those Alabama farmers who also uh, grew beans. Okay, so now let's go back to the, to the, to the uh, uh, that's our answer. But let's go back to the, to the, uh, this slide so I can talk about, uh, talk about the uh, uh, notation. So our notation for an event like this is uh, our event E is going to be a, a, a B, and then that bar, that vertical bar is read given, B given A. So this is the event that the farmer grew beans, B is the event that the farmer grew beans, given that the farmer is from Alabama. So that's how you read that. You read it as uh, B given A. Okay. Now, we've already talked about given A means you're no longer talking about all of the farmers in the survey. You're only talking about those uh, outcomes of event A. So I can ignore all of the outcomes except those that are in event A. And then I'm looking for the probability of B given A. So how many of those outcomes that are in A are also in B? That's the, the 234 that I have shown there. Uh, and so if you, uh, you know, I've said it a couple of times, but now let's write it down that what did I do in the denominator, the 351, that's the number of outcomes in A, and in the numerator, those are the number of outcomes that are in B that are also in A. So that's the number of outcomes in A and B. So that's how you're going to calculate a, pro a conditional probability. Now, let me show you a formula that you're going to see often used. I, don't, I, I generally just do it this way, but what I could do is in that very last expression that I have there, I can divide both numerator and denominator by the number of outcomes in the survey, and when I do that, in both numerator and denominator, I get probabilities. In the numerator, I get the probability of A intersect B, and in the denominator, I get the probability of A. And so that's a general uh, formula that, that most people start with is that this probability of B given A is the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of A. Again, I just think of it in terms of Venn diagrams and, and come up with the numbers and, and just do whatever they ask me to do. Okay, but now we could, uh, we could clear out the fractions on what we have written down there, clear out the fractions, and we have then that the probability of A intersect B is the probability of B given A times the probability of A. Now, one other comment is that you could interchange the roles of A and B and rewrite this as the probability of A intersect B equals the probability of A given B times the probability of B. You know, if you need to pause the, the, the video, do so and, and convince yourself that uh, either one of these uh, are, these are equivalent to each other. You can interchange the roles of A and B and, and get one from the other. So those are, those are formulas that you're going to see. Uh, you'll see those sorts of formulas in, in, uh, you know, on the solutions to the, 
uh, SOA sample questions, for instance, and some other places you might see those, uh, those formulas. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our original question, or our original uh, 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 setup here, and let me change the question. Now let's determine the probability that a surveyed farmer grew beans or cotton, given that the farmer is from Alabama. So maybe it's worded to you this way. So symbolically, what I'm calculating here is the probability of B union C that the farmer grew beans or cotton, given that the farmer is from, from Alabama. So once again, the way I would do this is I would populate my Venn diagram. I'm given A, so I'm going to ignore everything that's not in A, and then I'm going to look at the event. Well, first of all, since I'm ignoring everything that's not in A, I'm going to get a ratio, and in the denominator, I'm going to get the 351 that were from Alabama. Those are the 351 Alabama farmers in the, in the denominator. And now I want to look at the, in, in the numerator, I want to look at the event a little bit more closely, and the event is that the, the, the farmer is in the set B union C. So I've highlighted in green the B union C part of, of those farmers. And so my answer then would just be the... Um, uh, 91 plus 143 plus 78 in the numerator divided by the 351 or 312 uh, divided by 351. Let's look a little bit more closely at the numerator. I have it in green right now. Uh, you know, how can we describe those, those uh, that are in green? Well, we, I, I said it, but now let's, let's write it down mathematically. I said those are the, the, the farmers who are in B union C who are also in, in, in A because I, I restricted everything to being in uh, these farmers being in set A. And so mathematically, I'll write that as a B union C that I'm then going to intersect with A. So I've written it down, uh, I've written it down here. And uh, uh, let, let's, let, let me put in red the two expressions that I want to focus on. Be a little bit careful in the numerator of that very last expression. Notice I have B union C in parentheses and then intersect A. Uh, you got to be a little bit careful here. You can't be you can't be lazy with your with your with your uh, notation. Uh, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the parentheses off on the B union C part. I'm going to take the parentheses off, and I put a not equals to because you're not going to get the right answer. If you write a B union C intersect A without the parentheses, it's 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 an ambiguous statement. Are you doing a B union C that you're then intersecting with A, or are you doing a B that you're going to union with the intersection of C and A. If you do those different ways, you get different numbers. So you've got to be a little bit careful. So, so don't be lazy. And, and the other uh, uh, comment that I wanted to make, of course, well, I, I mentioned it in a previous slide, that I could divide both of these by uh, the number of, the last expression, I could divide both numerator and denominator by the number of elements in the sample or number of outcomes in the sample, and I would get this probability. I want to write it this way because I, I, I want to convince you we're not doing anything new here. This is just the probability of an event given another event, the probability of E intersect, I'm sorry, the probability of E given A, where E is just now the event B union C. So it makes it look more complicated because I got three different events floating around, a B and a C and an A, but it's really just the same principle that we talked about before. Uh, pause this video, pause this, this frame if you need to and and, and convince yourself of that. That I'm just looking at the probability of an event E given A, it's always just the probability of E intersect A divided by the probability of A. That's going to be your formula. Again, if I'm just doing the numeric problem, I write the Venn diagram and I just, and I just do it. Okay, so, uh, so I've got this. Uh, this, is, this is what the probability of B union C given A would be. I want to take it a little step farther because I want to, uh, I want to show you another relationship to uh, a previous formula that we talked about. Uh, so uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you'll see why I'm going to do this in just a second, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add in and subtract out 143 on uh, the numerator. So since I added it in and subtracted it out, then I'm not changing anything. And the reason I want to do this, it'll be clear in just a second, but the reason I want to do this is now I want to split that very last expression up. That's a one term expression. I'm going to split it up into three terms uh, this way. So let me go back to what I did before just to convince you that I'm, I'm, doing the same, I'm getting the same result, okay? So now the reason I want to do it this way is because now if you look at the first term on that last equation, the 91 plus the 143, that's, and, and I'm dividing that by the 351, the 91 plus the, 
the, the 143 would be giving me all of those values in all of those farmers that are bean farmers uh, given that they were in uh, from, from uh, Alabama. So that would be a probability of B given A is that first term. Likewise, if I look at the 78 plus the 143, that's, and I divide that by the 351, that's giving me this conditional probability of C given A. And if I subtract off the 143 there, well, the 143 would be in both B and C. And since I'm dividing by uh, uh, 351 instead of 2000, I would write that as a probability of B intersect C given A. All right. Uh, so this is the equation that I get then. As, uh, I hope that I've convinced you that the probability of B union C given A would be the probability of B given A plus the probability of C given A minus the probability of B intersect C given A. And I want to remind you that these are these are conditional probabilities, but if we looked at the unconditional probabilities, we already knew that the probability of B union C was the probability of B plus the probability of C minus the probability of B intersect C. So uh, what I'm saying is that you, you already knew this last equation, that's an unconditional probability, and if you condition each of the events on uh, uh, the event A, condition each of the events in that last uh, in the last equation on event A, you get another true statement as we've, as we've just shown. Okay, I want to take a, 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 just a very short time to do one more example to, again, illustrate that if they were asking me, if all I'm asked to do is calculate a probability, then I don't go through any of these formulas. I just write the Venn diagram and do it. So, for instance, if I'm asked to calculate the probability that a surveyed farmer grew cotton given the farmer is from Alabama or grew beans, so let's unwind that. This is a conditional probability because I see the word given there that the farmer is from Alabama or grew beans. So I've got, an, I've got a, a, a farmer who is in set A or B, A union B. So the given part is A union B, and I want the probability that the farmer uh, grew beans given that they were uh, from, I'm sorry, grew cotton given that they were uh, either from Alabama or grew beans. So how do I do this? Again, this is the type of problem that you're more likely to see on an exam. And, and um, uh, when I see this, I, I look at the condition. Uh, you know, the condition part is A union B. So I'm ignoring everything outside of A union B. So watch what I do here. I'm going to take out all of the numbers that are not in the union of A and B. So I took those numbers out. And now once I take those numbers out, I want to look at, well, how many of those are in event C? And then that's going to be my answer. I'm going to take the ratio of the number of those that were in C, there, the 78 plus 143 plus 520, and divide that by the number of those that were in A union B. I end up with 741 over 1322. So again, these are not hard problems if you do these Venn diagrams. Uh, I, hope, I hope that uh, you will agree with me uh, on that. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.